I was born on the lease, the oil lease, west of San Antonio. And then at two years old, we went to California following the oil boom. The profession came on in 1929, and we moved back to San Antonio. Soon after graduating high school in 1937, John Sonny East married Dolly Perks in 1940. I was 19 and she was 18. Yeah. And we said we were going to make it together or we'd starve to do it. And we damn near starved to do it. Roughly two years into marriage, while en route to China, Texas, John and his wife heard alarming news on the car radio. Uh, and the news came over on December the 7th. I said, I'm going. She said, I know. And that was the end of that. And so, with dreams of becoming a pilot, John East volunteered for the Army Air Corps. He was 21 years old. And uh, at that time, I had two children. After months of flight training, John obtained his wings and became co-pilot for the B-17 Flying Fortress, a four-engine heavy bomber with a top speed of 287 miles per hour. On Christmas Eve, we were ordered to go overseas. With air support needed in Europe, John departed America in early 1944. In May of the same year, he arrived at his destination. Over the next six months, John flew non-stop bomb runs out of Kim Bolton, England, and into Nazi Europe. He was quickly promoted to pilot the B-17. I was never nervous. The only nervous time was I, when I'd wake up in the morning. But as soon as I got out there and got the engine running and pulled the wheels up, my heart settled down, and I'm off. The 1st Bombardment Division faced enemy resistance in almost every run. John recalled a specific flight involving anti-aircraft weaponry. And as they fell out, you're supposed to fill forward, to form, fill a formation for it. And one was shot down, and I, nobody moved up, so I did. And I did that three times. I ended up flying lead on the lead ship. If the threat from below wasn't severe enough, German aircraft posed an entirely different challenge from above. All across Germany, you counterfighter. And they would get just within range and then down. That mission was nine, nine to 10 hours. The fleet's objective destroy a Nazi aircraft factory. One good thing about if you got across Poland, there must have been their cadets who were flying the fighters over there because they weren't very good. John even came in close contact with an enemy fighter, who he luckily outsmarted. He lined up behind me way back there, just out of my 50s range, because they had 20 millimeters. And I told the tail gunner, tell me to jump when he fires. So he'd say, jump. And I'd pop it up like that and pop, 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 And I'd ease back down. And I'd run him out of ammunition. He turned around and went home. After 32 aerial missions, John flew his final bomb run on June 20th, 1944. Soon after, he was ordered home where he remained with his family until the war's end. I was insulted when I came back because I couldn't fly passengers. I had to have to, at least 700 hours in order to call passengers around. And how many hours did you have? I had a little over 500. John remained in the Air Force, where he retired as a lieutenant colonel in 1964. He immediately became branch chief for basic research at NASA. In his nine years there, he witnessed the first photos of Mars as well as the 1969 moon landing. I'm not sure that I want to be remembered at all. What should I be remembered for? I'm a human being. I am not anything special. <laughs>